Hey everybody, it's MedTech67 again, bringing you today a video that I'm sure almost none of you will watch, but some of you have asked for. I don't know how that it is for an advertisement, but that's what it is. Today we're replacing the windshield on this 2018 Transit T250. It's got the 3.5 EcoBoost in it, even though that's not really relevant to what we're doing. This thing's probably on its fourth or fifth windshield by now, as you'll see when we go to take this windshield out. Today we'll be using the, um, uh, the Viper. Uh, from Equalizer. It's a cord tool to remove the windshield. We'll also be using their um, extractor to remove our uh, GPS antennas and our, uh, our drive cam up there. So follow along with us. It's a pretty simple and straightforward process. We'll show you all the ins and outs. I am Aegis certified. Tyler is not, so anything he touches is technically illegal. I'm just kidding. But um, we will follow uh, basically all of the, the industry practices of replacing the windshield. We are using Sika. Mach 30, uh, so this will have a 30 minute safe drive away time. Uh, so follow along with us and we'll show you how this is done. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off these two 15s here on the windshield wiper arms and get those out of the way. Before you go try and take it off, make sure that you get the little spring washer out of there. That way it doesn't go flying. So the trick to getting these off is you just over here on the long end, give it a few thumps pulls right out for you. There's also a little rain catcher clips in right here that you're gonna to want to get out of the way. There's one on this side as well. Before you go to yank the cowl off, you're gonna to wanna to pluck this line right there. Be careful, these love to snap. That's why this one's new. Right there is our other push pin that we need to pull. Get it off both sides and now this cowl can come off. And if yours doesn't have this one snapped off the air box already, undo that and then you just lift out of this groove here Oh, and then Tyler still needs to take that one off. Any more there won't be. There we go. Now we just gotta take that out of there. Now on the transit, for the rest of this, you can pretty much just leave the hood down. Pro tip, before you ever start to take a windshield out, you wanna go look at your bug. This is what's called a bug. We got a DW2111. And I know it'll be backwards, but you'll get the point. Yeah, focus. Well, take my word for it, it says DW2111. Make sure that you have the right glass before you ever start cutting your windshield out. All right, so we need to get this little clamshell out of the way here. And this poor thing's been abused a few times already. This might not even require tools. Eh, maybe. I'm using this little equalizer all in one tool. This thing is really handy. But we're just pushing little tabs down like that. And then this clamshell's off when you go to put it away put it back together and set it out of the way so it doesn't get messed up all right and then we have let me see come around to this side here, I'll show you. you've got one connector for your mirror Where, where's my light oh crap pull that down and that's pretty much a mirror right there, and this is going to be a twist to pull off. So just turn. And that's Tyler. Just turn and pull off. And then we're just going to unhook our camera here. And that'll be down and out of our way. And then we'll pop this guy off. Alright, so we've got our uh, camera's removed. This does not have ADAS, so there's no ADAS camera to remove. Um, you just have to be careful around the cords as the cord works its way around. The system we're using is a cord removal tool. So basically it's a winch, an acre point, and then a uh, basically a Kevlar cord that goes all the way around the windshield. And as you winch it in, it pulls it through that urethane and cuts the urethane. We'll show you what that looks like here in just a bit. First thing you have to do is you have to start the cord we're gonna start it through right here. So Tyler's gonna hop on the inside. 
he's going to push the cord through the little special tool that equalizer has with the viper kit and then i will grab the cord and uh we'll pull it out all that we need and all the slack we need to go all the way around the windshield and then we'll start our cut all right so tyler's going to uh put the cord on the little jab tool there Come over a bit right here all right he's gonna push it on through that urethane all right now he's gonna pull back gently pull back a bit I'm gonna hook it there but you're good got it hooked there with my needle nose I'm gonna pull out a bit now here's the important part we don't want to cross our lines. Can't. Okay, you missed it there because my camera slipped. But what I have to do is I have to make sure which line I've got. So I'm going to pull on this side, which I hear is spinning my, uh, my winch there. And this side's my anchor. So this side of the cord is going to go up and around that way. And this side's going to go the other way. If it gets crossed and you try to pull, it'll just pull against each other. It'll snap and you have to restart the whole process. So now, we just pull enough line out to go all the way around the windshield. You do not want to drag this line against paint or anything like that, because it will burn right through the paint and scratch the, you know, the material underneath, the metal. should be enough to go all the way around this big old windshield. So he's going to take it that way. I'm going to go up and around this way. We're going to get it up underneath the windshield. You got enough room? Yep. I'm going to go ahead and pull off this antenna. I should have done that already. So we have plenty of room. So I'm gonna go on the inside. He's gonna guide the, uh, the excess towards me to make sure it doesn't get caught on anything and that'll take up the slack. So now we're gonna use a uh, bit of kit from the kit. That would be these protectors. This is going to sit in between the dash and the upholstery in that cord tool. It's going to hold that cord tool up against the glass and keep it from cutting into the upholstery, the foam dam, all that kind of stuff. If you do not use this, then it will cut right through upholstery or the electrical wires and stuff like that, like a hot knife through butter. We use this as the same idea on the A-pillars. It'll protect the A-pillars. And you really need to be wearing some cut resistant gloves like these, something with a thick sole. That way when uh, you can't get these into certain spots or if it's just more convenient to not use them, you can use this to hold the cord up against the glass. I'm telling you, you let that cord run against your finger, it'll cut right into you like a hot knife through butter.
But this cord that I'm using right now, it's not my favorite. The stuff that this tool came with was really the best. Uh, so you want to just take it nice and easy and slow. That other cord, you're able to go a lot quicker with this stuff. Take it nice and easy. And if you start to feel any resistance, what we do is you do this right here. You kind of make a sawing motion and it'll cut through the, you know, the pins, the plastic pins that come in the factory windshields and it'll snake it past the little keepers that are at the bottom of some windshields. And you gotta be especially careful in the corners. So I'm getting a little close to me, so I'm just going to back off a bit. Come on up here. I'm going to make sure I get in between my wires here. And around my corners. Just gentle tugs. This worked fine. Just waiting for that thing to change pitch so I know that it has full suction. Alright, so we have a cable here. We want to make sure that this gets all the way up underneath that cable to protect it. And on these corners, just take your time. few moments later. We continue with your regular scheduling programming after a whole lot of non-monetizable words. Um, yeah, that happens. This, this cord that I have here I don't like, but luckily it's pretty easy to just reset and uh, get going again. Um, A little trick. Oh, by the way, you want to get your uh, cable for your uh, mirror up and out of the way. Make sure that you don't slice that thing all to hell. This is where ditching the uh, little plastic piece or the you know little shield and just using gloves is a lot easier. So I'm just gonna route that up and behind that.
said, those corners can be challenging. You just let it use that sawing motion while making sure you're holding it away from that uh, upholstery. It'll sort of saw right into that upholstery. Problem is there's a lot of urethane right there in the corner. And once it breaks past it, you'll feel it. There's not a lot of urethane on these transits down the sides and along the top. It's a pretty thin bead. So at this point, we're gonna let these cross. Now you need to be careful at this point because it's possible that this may start cutting from that direction and you want to make sure that there's going to be nothing cutting into your upholstery there so if you're doing it by hand here just go ahead and sink your guard in right there that way if it does start to cut down there you don't miss it and it's cutting right through the dash you can see what i'm doing i just put my finger up on it hold it right up against the glass i just kind of let my finger go with it and then reset Pretty soon here, it's going to be completely behind the guard on both sides, and we just go until it pulls out. gonna hold your anchor. I don't mind that my anchor is moving right there because it's still creating a sawing motion on that last little bit of urethane. There we go. All the way through the urethane, all the way around. At this point, we can put up this tool, get our suction cups on, and pull this windshield off. All right, Tyler's gonna put his suction cup on over there. We're gonna lift this up and gently take it up out of the way. On your count. So it's at this point that we do some prep work. Before we do any cuts on this urethane, we want to get all the dirt out of here that we can. So we're going to wipe this whole area down. We can spray it down with some glass cleaner, get all the dirt out of here. We're going to get an air nozzle in here and blow it all out. And we do that before we cut. That's because underneath there is virgin urethane and it will be chemically pure if we don't touch it with our human hands or get dirt in it or oil from our oil from our you know, air compressor anything like that so we want to get all of the dirt out of here that we can right now before we cut this urethane and then over here we need to prep this glass so a little bit of anatomy on glass we have two layers of uh, tempered glass that are uh, laminated together with a uh, special uh, you know plastic like material in the middle and then on the outside we have what's called a frit. This ceramic etched uh, black stuff right here is called the frit. This is what our urethane bonds to. We have to prime this when we have to get it perfectly clean. As you can see right now, we've got smudges. We're gonna have fingerprints on it just cause this is the way it comes shipped. There's gonna be adhesive from the tape. We have to get all that off. We're gonna clean it up real good. And then we're gonna scuff it with a Scotch-Brite like material and get down to fresh ceramic uh, so it's nice and clean there and then we will uh, activate it with Sika's activator let that dry for five minutes and then we will prime it with Sika's primer and then that will make it ready to bond to the new urethane the only priming we have to do on the vehicle is if we uh, hit bare metal or any urethane were to come off and we had bare metal you know showing or if there were any rust we would have to scuff activate and prime but uh here the only priming we should have to do is if we accidentally cut all the way through the urethane and hit bare metal 
All right, so we're gonna clean this up real good and get all this dirt out of here. Now we're gonna blow any material that's left in the nooks and crannies out of there with a uh, blow gun. So the tool we're using is by BTB. This is their winged uh, knife, urethane knife set. Um, Gilbert down there at uh, Equalizer Class says these are a good thing to use because they actually pull on the urethane. So if you have any weak spots on your urethane, it would pull away and let you know instead of cutting cleanly with a razor blade right through that bad urethane, you wouldn't know that the underlying urethane was bad. And it's got these wings here to keep you from gouging into your, uh, your body there and causing rust in an area that you really can't get to to fix without pulling the windshield. So you wanna start your cut, get up underneath the urethane, and then as soon as you can, you wanna grab it and just pull light traction upwards. And that really makes the cut a lot easier. And you also need to pretty much sharpen these guys pretty much every time you use them. And what we're going for is to leave behind about one to two millimeters of urethane. We don't want to take it all the way down to bare metal. Urethane sticks best to urethane. pro tip because these transits have a bit of an exposed edge on that urethane take you some masking tape and run it close because once the windshield's here you cannot get your hand in here to clean off any urethane that may have smudged out or any primer or anything like that And the finished product will look much better if you just protect that area. After the windshield's in, you just reach in here and pull it right on out. And if any tape breaks or anything after the urethane cures, you can just get a power, power washer in there and blast that bit off. All right, so first we give this a good wipe down just to get the majority of the grease off. And this is super important. This is literally what holds the whole windshield in. And from this point on, you cannot touch that with bare fingers. So after that, spray it down again. And now we're going to scuff it with our Scotch Brite. down one more time and you can see when we do it pulling up a little bit of black that's from that ceramic that's fine you don't want to go crazy on it and burn right through the ceramic everybody thinks that the frit serves a purpose of giving you know, the uh, urethane something to bond to and that's actually not true uh, the main purpose of the frit is to protect the urethane against UV light. That's its main purpose. There are bonded frits where the uh, frit is inside the two layers of glass. And you're literally going straight to glass. There's urethanes out there like Sika P2G. 
primerless to glass. You don't have to use any primer and you can put it straight to glass. So no, the frit is not a bonding agent for the urethane to the glass. Urethane bonds to glass, no problem at all. Its job is to protect the urethane from UV light because urethane absorbs UV light. That's why all of your clear coats on your cars are made out of urethane. They stop UV light. And uh, unfortunately, by them stopping it, they take all of the damage. So after that's dried, we're going to uh, activate it. Um, this is basically just a cleaner, a uh, final stage cleaner for the uh, before the primer. Uh, you want to make sure that your stuff is not expired. This expires 31 July 2023. It's February. So turn upside down, give it a crack, let the pad get nice and wet. And we don't want to scrub. We just want an even application. We're gonna let that dry for five minutes. So you wanna make sure your primer is not expired. It's not, I gotta use it pretty soon though. It's about to expire. Um, you're gonna shake this for 60 seconds after the ball starts rattling. And then immediately cap this stuff. It's a good thing I'm wearing gloves because I've already got some on the glove. Once it's on your skin, it doesn't come off. Set that aside and we want to go prime all the spots that we burned through. When we were cutting our urethane. It's okay that you did. We just have to protect the spots that we did. And you gotta move quick because this primer dries super quick. And you gotta get a new dabu once it's dry on this. So we know that our urethane stopped right there, that far away from the glass. So we're just gonna use that as our spacing. You're gonna let your dauber roll as you put on your primer. Now my dauber went dry there at the bottom so I can get a fresh one. I'll redo that bottom part. So I'm just gonna pick up where that primer dried up. Right here. And kind of double prime right above it. Because I have some extra and I don't want it running. Don't be afraid to paint the extra spots in the corner just in case you fall short. You got plenty of frit there in the corner and there's plenty of material on the truck just in case you don't paint the line exactly where the primer was supposed to go, where the urethane was supposed to go. Making sure we're not expired. So when you get your urethane, we're doing a uh, these are four 420 mil uni packs. Uh, especially if it's been you know the shop's been a little cool, warm it up and then you want to kind of massage it. Is the best way I can. You're gonna need it. However you want to say it. Uh, it flows a lot better after you've kind of worked it a little bit and gotten it loosened up. Otherwise, it does not like to come out of your gun. Now they sell. Uh, P2G and Mach 30 and Mach 60 um, and a lot of other different types in the old 10 ounce cartridges uh, that you can literally do right out of a caulking gun. Um, I wouldn't want to. It's thick stuff and that's how they used to do it. I'm sure some old timer glass guy was like that's how I did it back in my day. I'm, I'm sure he did. I'm 
sure he's got Popeye forearms. And I'm sure his beads look better than mine, even though I do it with a uh, an electric, you know, cocking gun. But um, I'm telling you, this is the easier way to do it. So I haven't cut my nozzle yet. Now on these transits, you have to be very sparing with the uh, urethane on the sides and even on the top, just because there's no molding. There's no flashing on the edge that covers it. Kind of like this excursion over here. You don't see any of the urethane because this excursion, the glass comes with this molding that completely covers it, uh, completely encompasses it. You can put as much urethane really as you want in there. Uh, I, I wouldn't advise doing too much, but you can put in a lot. You have a lot of room for air. You don't have that room for air on the transits just because there's such a narrow margin and there's nothing covering it up. So if you put on a lot and you deck that glass, it'll <laughs> squeeze right out and you'll see it from the outside. And there's really nothing you can do at that point. It's gonna look like crap which is why I told you to put that tape on there. So I'm going with the smaller size of nozzle that are already pre-marked. I'm gonna cut a 45 degree V notch. By the way, all these tools are available from Equalizer for a nominal fee. And the nozzles are already marked where to cut your notch at. Okay. Now I'm going to take a bone and I'm going to clean up my waves, make a nice pretty peak, smooth that out. The guys who are much better than this don't have to do this. And I have one joint up here. I want to make sure that the two joints are welded together, that way they act as one triangular bead so a known big issue with the transits is where the windshield meets the cowl you prep the prop rod in there I got you so the windshields come with this little protective piece right here and you got I got you. you got to pull that out and what that does is it protects that little molding right there that actually snaps into the cow. The important thing is your windshield is spaced correctly to where you can get the, the cow snapped into that. And while the urethane is wet is the best time to do this because you can still make tiny little adjustments on the, on the uh, windshield. Now I'm talking like 16th, eighth of an inch max. That's the most you're gonna do. Once you've decked that urethane, you can't go smudging it around or you're gonna get a leak and it's not gonna be as strong. So now is the time on these transits to get your cowl in here and get that thing snapped in. Otherwise, rain just runs right down here, right onto your engine. So when you go get your windshield done by somebody, this is the first thing I'd check. Like when they say, hey, you're done, you know, don't wash it for, you know, a couple days, yada, yada, yada. Go out, pop the hood and make sure that your cowl, this little edge right here, this little plastic edge is popped into that piece and that it can pop into that piece. Otherwise, you're going to have the rotten coil packs and the damage to the uh, little brass, you know, uh, inserts into the valve covers when you go try to do spark plugs. All right, so we have the cowl buttoned up besides the windshield washers. We've got our little rain gutters back in. We've got our windshield washers hooked back up, rain gutters on both sides, our clips in. And again, double check, make sure this hasn't popped off. Make sure that's all good. You don't want drainage issues. Now we're going to put on the windshield wipers. So we've got our new windshield, or our you know, old windshield wipers put back on. What you want to do is you want to make sure that your wipers are back where they're supposed to be on their little drive gear. So get a light coat of glass cleaner, that way if there's any dust or anything, we don't scratch our brand new windshield. We'll kick the key on and cycle on.
Is that look, Tyler? Besides needing new wipers, that looks good. So you can pop your little caps back on, make sure they're nice and tight. Now, I don't recommend you go trying to put on the mirror right now. This stuff has a 30-minute safe drive-away time, but if it's me, I like to wait for that stuff to cure at least an hour because these mirrors, you really have to crank down on those things to get them to pop up, and you're pushing right there at the center of the windshield, the hardest place to deck to make sure you have a good seal. So I like to let that urethane get a little bit cured before I go trying to crank down that windshield. Now, if it's you know one of those things where it's a time crunch, have somebody on the outside push right there on that little uh, mirror uh, mount while you're pushing from the other side so you don't go undecking that glass and causing a leak. All right, everybody, we got the inside buttoned up. It's just a reverse putting the trim on the way we showed you. We had to put our camera back on and we salvaged our pipe pass, uh, you know, our little turnpike thing off of our other windshield. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure you clean up the glass, make sure you get all your tools out, make sure you don't give any tools away to somebody if you're doing this for a living, that always sucks. Um, now, we could have done a leak test. I have a leak tester from Equalizer. No offense at the fine people at Equalizer. I've seen it not work. Uh, I've seen it not hear a leak, but then a leak happen. Uh, so I just don't have a whole lot of confidence in it. And I don't use tools that I have 100% confidence in. Uh, the best leak test I find is let the thing go get wet after it's cured and see if you have a leak. Now, on these transits, I like to let them sit if we can just because there's so much windshield that's actually a structural component of this vehicle. And that when it goes over, you know, uneven terrain, that frame can do a lot of racking and work that urethane and there's nothing to support the windshield like on a lot of other vehicles. So the windshield can really sag on you. Um, when you do this for a living, make sure that you record the relative humidity, the temperature, the lot numbers of the stuff you used and put it on your AGR authorization form. That way you, uh, you will get paid if they ever have to recall the urethane that you used. All right, everybody, I hope this was good for you and you get to see how the windshield gets replaced on a transit. I don't imagine this is going to be one of the most popular videos, but hey, it's out there. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.